Golden Arm, because you're good at what you do. So we're here this morning at the plant, at the nuclear power plant. And as I always say on some of the other videos that uh, working in a nuclear power plant, they're very technical. So here's a prime example. I got a 532 gap all the way around on this schedule 40 stainless steel. So they come back with something just a hair a bit bigger than a 532 gap and they're using it to make sure it's not no wider than a 532 gap or maybe should I say if it's a little bit tighter than a 532 gap and this is what they're using so it's good it doesn't fall through with a little bit of pressure but then when you come here it kind of falls through and they're binging me on that so basically what I gotta do I gotta take this tack bring it forward just a hair to about right here no nope, just to about right there where this uh, Allen wrench doesn't fall through so from right here to that indentation right there you see so back to here so I'm gonna drag it out from here to this little indentation where it doesn't fall through and little things like that they they're real particular about but other than that everything else turned out pretty good just as I expected I mean, sometimes it's a little bit aggravating when you're dealing with these guys out there, at this, these QCs and things of that nature. Pretty much like they're nitpicking. And that's what they're doing, of course, but hey, they say it's the nuclear culture, so it is what it is. But the tax is good. Nice and clean tax. You see that tack at the bottom? And one thing to, I want to mention, whenever you feather edge at the nuclear power plant on different projects you own, because QCs are different. When you're dealing with the Weld Tech Lab, it's a lot different. They don't want you to leave no keyhole. Not at all. You know how sometimes you pop off the tack and it leaves a nice circle keyhole. And the keyhole is usually a little bit wider than the gap. They don't want that. So what you need to do is, before you pop off your tack, back up a little bit and run up the wall. Okay, just, don't just go forward and pop off that way. This is going to make your gap at the base of your tack too wide. So again, what you do, you just, as you begin to finish your tack, back up a little bit and pop off the wall. But yeah, that's just something to keep in mind. You might run into the same thing, but this is the issue that I'm running into. And they're kind of calling me out on it. Same thing with this here. This is uh, about 532. But again, they do not want this Allen wrench, which is a little bit tighter than a 532, a little bit less than a 532 in the width. They don't want it to fall through, so let's see. So it's good on that side. Let's see at the tag. It's kind of falling through right there at the base of the tag. See that? Don't want that. I think this side is perfect. They don't want it to fall through, and it's good. It's not falling through at the tag. But as you can see, it might fall through just a hair here. Let's see. Nope, that's good on that side. Let's see, this might be a, a good example of that it, a good example. No, no, this is actually good too. That side's good. That's the point right there. You see that right there? As you can see at the base of the tack, when I popped off, I kind of rolled up this way here and it made the gap opening just a little bit bigger. So again, don't pop off at the base of the tack. When you're coming up on your tack and you get ready to finish, just back up a little bit and come off the wall because they do not want this. They don't want that opening. This side is the actual side that, they, that they're saying is just too wide. This is a perfect 532 right here, but again, 
too wide for them. So I went back and I made those corrections. Like I was showing you. I just went and I added more wells. I got the pipe turned somewhat going down, but I just added some weld to the tank from here to there. And as you can see, the aloe wrench is no longer falling through. It's no longer falling through. That's good. No longer falling through. It's no longer falling through. And on this side, it's no longer falling through. Tacks look like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's no longer falling through, and that's how they want it. So we're gonna go ahead and correct this one here, make the changes, and then we're gonna go ahead and get the, the well tech lab people to come over and. Uh, to begin rooting these pipes out, getting the prep for the shutdown. That's about it. It's a little aggravating, but hey, this is what they want. No problem. Here's a prime example of these guys at the new plant. Um, when I say these guys, I'm talking about well tech, uh, the QCs, in other words, right? So, let me show you. So, from what I was showing you, about this gap opener. They want it to be a little tighter than a 532. Okay, so I went back and made all the corrections. As you can see, the Allen wrench isn't falling through. It's not falling through over here. And over here is good as well, not falling through. So, <laughs> I went through and fixed each side, each tack, drug out the tack a little bit more. And as you can see, it's not falling through, right? Call well tech support. This guy comes over and takes the Allen wrench. Sees it's not falling through, so he turns it just a hair, lifts it up, and then <laughs> does this. I said, What the? F okay, so in other words, you turn it off the edge. So if I turn it this way, it's not going to fall through, okay? He turns it this way. where it can fall through. That's what I call nitpicking. You see it don't fall through that way, but if you turn it flat, it's gonna slide through barely. And this is what he's telling me to go back and extend this tack from here all the way to here. So things like that. If you can tolerate things like that, then you can make it in a nuclear world. Again, I call it nitpicking. But again, they're paying you, so you gotta keep a cool head because I started to, you know. But anyway, stay positive. It's all good.